This is Credit Matters, and I'm Greg Moskowitz, the Global Fixed Income Research Group. The number of potential downgrades decreased to 525 as of July 31st from 540 as of June 28th, reaching a 15-month low. Moreover, the gap between the potential upgrades and potential downgrades narrowed to pre-crisis lows as the decrease in the number of potential downgrades exceeded the decrease in the number of potential upgrades. Potential downgrades are entities Standard & Poor's rating services, rates AAA to B- that have either negative rating outlooks or ratings on credit watch with negative implications. We removed one sovereign entity from our potential downgrade list since our last report, the Republic of Senegal, and added three, Barbados, Republic of Iceland, and the Republic of Portugal. As a result, the number of sovereigns now at risk of a downgrade increased to 29. Of the 525 potential downgrades, 107, or 20 percent, are banks, with European banks accounting for more than half of this total. The utility and consumer product sectors account for 8.6 percent and 8.4 percent of the potential bond downgrades, respectively. We incorporate the list of the top 250 corporate obligations held in rated U.S. cash flow CLOs in our potential bond downgrade research. We found that 28 of the 250 companies also have downgrade potential. This month, the media and entertainment sector has the highest concentration of potential downgrade CLO constituents with 25%. The ratings on the 28 companies that overlap with the CLO list range from triple B- to B-, with a higher concentration in the B rating category. As of July 31st, four of the 28 entities were rated B+, 10 were rated B, and five were rated B-. You can find more information in this month's report titled Bond Downgrade Potential in Emerging and Developed Markets Including the U.S. and Europe. The gap between potential downgrades and potential upgrades narrows to pre-crisis levels. This has been Credit Matters. Thank you for watching.